In this episode of Unsolved Canadian Mysteries, we're talking about Jerome, the legless wonder of Nova Scotia, and how we got there. It was probably pirates. That's what I think. Come check it out. Hello, everybody. My name is Kenton DeYoung, and I'm sitting here with my co-host, Dylan Fairman. Yeah. And this is Unsolved Canadian Mysteries. Mysteries. So, Dylan, how you been? I'm all right, Kenton. How are you? Not bad. Not bad. I just saw you a little while ago. Yeah? Why? We were doing another podcast. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it was only been a couple of weeks since we did wow. the last one. We're on the ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what was the last time we did? We did the, we did a Patreon last time, right? Yes. The Patreon one was about the to- Tootsie of the Flesh. Yeah, yeah. Tootsie, yeah. And the, Tootsie. One, the one before that was about Michaela Bali. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also re-released our... Um, Oh. Our first Patreon, the, yes. the Many Deaths of Tom Thompson. Yes, that one's cool. Yeah, yeah. I, we got a question on TikTok about that. They said, who the heck is this guy? And yeah. I, I said, uh, he's a painter that's dead now. <laughs> like, I don't know. Bomb, bomb, bomb. <laughs> Spoiler, I guess, but not really. It's in, cool. the, in the title. Well, Kenton, what do you have today? Today's episode, you know, I read about it and I thought to myself, ah, no, no, no. Mm. I'll find something else. No, no, fire it. You know, okay, for people who don't know, who don't know, Dylan doesn't know what I'm going to talk about. So the fact he said pirates is like it's weird. It's really weird. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. I I know I don't know any of these stories. I've never looked them up. The only time I ever hear anything cryptic, that's what it's called, right? Cryptid. Yeah. That that's that sounds like werewolves and shit. Yeah. yeah. The only time I know cryptid and like murders and stuff like that is when Kenton tells me them. That's it. <laughs> Anyway, sorry. I said pirates. And yeah, it fits. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I was like, oh, this one's kind of kind of lame. I think I'll find a monster. It's been a while since we had a good monster on the podcast, yeah. right? And I was sitting down with Jessica, and I was telling her this story, thinking, what would you thought of it? She said, I really like that story. Mm-hmm. You should do that one. Like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, right. so maybe we'll do the monster on the Patreon. Maybe we'll do the monster on next uh, free episode. But this one's uh, not monster related. It's a pirate. It is pirate related. A, a, a little wow. bit. A little bit. Oh, yeah. Well, any pirates are good. Yeah. Not a Saskatchewan pirate, though. So, it's okay. Yeah. All right. All right. So the story begins on September 8th, 1863, in Sandy Cove, Nova Scotia. Hmm. Have you ever been to Nova Scotia? No. No. Are you familiar with the geography of Nova Scotia? Um, there's like water there, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and I. And crabs? Yeah. Yes, actually, this part of Nova Scotia known, is known for their crabs. There so you that's go. just great <laughs> that you knew that too. Wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, so I thought, how could I describe the geography of Nova Scotia the best to kind of tell the story? And I came a- came upon this myself today. So uh, my thought was, if you put up your arm and you put up like your like you're gonna do like a rock and roll with your finger, your index finger and your pinky finger. Yeah. Okay. So that like your hand and your fingers, that's where Cape Breton is. And then down your arm is the rest of Nova Scotia. Okay. And this part, a Sandy Cove, it's going to be on the outside edge of your arm. Um, okay. I've got uh, I've got a mole there. Yeah. That kind of helped people where it is. So this is on the very edge of the province. It's on a peninsula, actually. So it's very narrow water on both sides of it. One side of it has the Bay of Fundy on it. Uh, so it, it is still very remote. The beaches are known for their colorful glass. Um sand and oh, crabs okay. crabs crabs lots of crabs i was looking at the google reviews like, it's like so so many crabs i'm like oh, i didn't even know that, that like i never have a crab problem you know <laughs> here <laughs> well, people just have crabs in their lawn or what oh well, like some people have like mountain crabs or river crabs oh but like and other crabs but <laughs> i don't have crabs yeah. good <laughs> so, kenton yeah. it's good to know yeah, yeah. on september 8th 1863 eight-year-old George Albright is walking down Sandy Cove and he's you know looking for what he wants to look for like it's it's back before internet before tv before a lot of like you know things Mm. Uh, I was September so maybe it was summer break still I don't know how school was like in 1863 maybe it wasn't yet school yet right yeah Uh, maybe there was no school out there I don't know because that's pretty far back arguably doesn't start when Canada is a country we're off by a couple of years, but it ends. It ends in Canada's country, so we'll keep it. Yeah. It's not the furthest back we've gone, so right. I felt it's still good enough. So he's walking down the beach, and he sees a lump on the sand by the water. And he walks over to it, and he realizes that it's it's a person. But something's wrong. Something's missing. And as he approaches this person, he realizes this person has no legs and just arms. Because they're buried in the sand. 
Well, the, the laying on the, sand. The classic, the classic fun thing to do at the beach. You bury part of your body <laughs> under the sand. <laughs> Kenton, I just solved the mystery. No, no, no. I wish it was so simple. Okay. And I've read two, two kind of versions of this. One version one is George walked up to the to the body and took a look at it and realized that uh, this person's alive mm. and that the legs have been cut off. The other version is uh, the the person saw George coming and tried to run away. Well drag himself away with his arms right right kind of like the walking dead <laughs> yeah yeah sure okay, sure either version i'm not sure which one happened in another version there's two boys so you know whatever right who knows what exactly it was but anyway george is the name given george albright found this man and then went back home told his parents and his parents came out and together they brought this man to their house to the albright residence as this man was recovering in their house they asked him questions like where are you from What's your name? What happened to your legs? They determined that although his legs had been cut off uh, just above the knee, mm. it was done by a, quote, skilled surgeon and that it was still in the healing phase. It was a recent surgery, but it wasn't like someone took an axe or whatever and chopped off his legs. It was it was done deliberately. But whenever they asked this guy, you know, any questions, he he couldn't answer it. He didn't seem to speak English or French. And as time passed, they determined he didn't speak Spanish, Italian or latin either which is not surprising <laughs> Cause, yeah because few people speak latin i'm surprised they were even able to test that <laughs> you know yeah like, oh, let's go down the languages that people know around town he doesn't even know latin gary oh <laughs> oh man yeah. he must not be from here but he had a darker complexion and i think he was from the mediterranean mm. the albrights lived in a town called digby and today digby has about 2000 people in it i looked up its demographics in 1901 and there's about a thousand people in it this is before that. this is 1863 so i can't give you exact population i want to say about 400 500 i think that's fair right it's tough right especially because nova scotia has had a lot of people coming and going uh, a lot of they had the acadians pushed out they had the americans move in uh, after uh, the war of independence um a lot of people come and go through the maritime. So I I want to say 400, but I might be totally off on that. The fact now it has 2,000, it had 1,000 100 years ago. Mm. I think that's a good guess, but I don't know. Hmm. So I mentioned this only because the Albrights were pretty poor and they really couldn't have another person hanging around the house to feed them all the time. So they had, they had a meeting in Digby and decided that this man would go stay with different families. He'd kind of be like taken care of by the community. As they were trying to get him to talk, um somebody said that he answered that his name was jerome jerome but they weren't sure but everyone just kind of called him jerome after the fact jerome originally wasn't very friendly i think part of it is because he recently got his legs cut off and he couldn't speak the local language yeah i wouldn't be too friendly either no honestly it kind of dampens your day it... <laughs> who knows if he even was like aware of it you know like maybe he was just passed out his legs were infected mm -hmm. he just was in like a coma and then just wakes up and his legs are gone and these people who speak a different language like you would assume these people took my legs yes yes it said that he would often growl at people he didn't know mm. so this is, this is who we're dealing with here he's a Mediterranean man with no legs doesn't speak local language and is growling at the locals he's a growler he's a growler at this time nova scotia had a welfare program which is quite innovative because other provinces didn't have that yet and they gave jerome two dollars a week to pay for whatever he needed welfare you know i tried to do the conversion rate and it came up about 50 dollars a week that seems wrong but it's really difficult to convert money from the 1860s right because it's changed and the economy has changed and values have changed and currency has changed so i, I figured out about 50 dollars a week which is about uh 200 a month which is very little but enough for groceries if you're if you're uh dependent right right yeah i'm sure i didn't miss anything there mm -hmm. as time passed the locals determined that Jerome was kind of a financial liability. Uh, he wasn't very friendly. It was kind of difficult to have around. And, uh, you know, he was kind of a strange guy that washed up on shore one day. Right. So they determined, because of his appearance, of his darker complexion, that he had to have been a Catholic. Yeah, obviously. Obviously. Makes sense. <laughs> right? So they sent him from Digby to a town called Medigan, and I'm mispronouncing that. It's a French community, a Catholic community. And he went to go live with the Nicolas family. So this is Nicola, his, Nicola's wife, Juliet, and their stepdaughter. His stepdaughter. I didn't put her name. 
Larry. <laughs> Larry. <laughs> he lived with the Nicholas for about seven years, and they said he was a pleasure to, to live with them. They really enjoyed his company. In fact, the ladies of the house really loved having him around. I think it's because he was a really good listener. Because <laughs> he couldn't talk, and he couldn't walk away. Right. And he just had to sit there and listen all the time. Yeah, that also could be said uh, captive. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. listener, yeah. captive. Yeah. So he lived with them for seven years, and he really had a good time. They took care of him. But then Juliet would pass away, and uh, John would decide he's going to go back to France and 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 decided that Jerome would have to go live with somebody else. They would pick uh, the, I want to mispronounce this, the Camus residence. Camus. Where there was Deidre and Zebeth Camus. Wild names, right? Wow. Zebeth is, is a dude or chick? To be determined. Deidre sounds like a female name. Yeah. So Zebeth would be the male. Okay. But yeah, Zebeth is the name. I was like, that is a cool name. Yeah. But... I don't know the, the gender of that name, but I, it's assumed there to be a husband and wife. Right. So he would live with the with this family for a number of years, but they weren't so kind to him. Hmm. They decided that because his appearance got a lot of people curious, a lot of gawkers would come and say, oh, this is Jerome, the legless man who washed up on shore, right? Yeah, yeah. So they thought we should monetize this. And kind of put them on display like a, like a freak show. Like a circus? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So not only did they bring in the money from people who wanted to come and see Jerome, but he, they'd also kept the $2 a week that Jerome was getting from the government. There was some articles I read that talked about some of the children that would come and visit Jerome and how they would kind of pull pranks on him and tease him. Think of it if you're like in a circus and you got cruel children, you know, who can throw stuff at you or stuff like that. So... It wasn't the best life for Jerome there, but according to the reports I read, he didn't mind it. I think it's mostly because, you know, maybe he got to see people, but he got a warm house. He got a place to live, guess, got paid or got some food. I'm not sure. He didn't seem to mind it too much. He would live there until he passed away on April 15th, 1912. Yeah, well, you know, it, it's like, what do you, it, back then, what do you even do if you're missing both your legs? Like, that's yeah. tough. There was some articles that said like he would sleep by the fire during the day or he'd sit and look out in the water and sit on his chair. But yeah, what do you do? Like, I guess you could read books. You could teach classes. Well, I guess you can't speak the language. Yeah. Yeah. Some people thought maybe he had a brain injury mm. and that the part of his brain that was damaged was the part that could, could speak. So he could understand if he understood the language, but he couldn't speak it. Uh, so it, it's it's hard, you know, what do you do? So I'm not surprised he just kind of lounged around all day, every day. And unfortunately, his death was overshadowed because the same day he died was the, the Titanic went down. Oh. And Nova Scotia was right there when that happened. Right. So their headlines were filled about Titanic and not about the passing of Jerome the Legless Wonder. Goddamn Titanic. <laughs> the unsinkable ruined his legacy. Yeah. yeah. So we'll talk about some of the, the theories. Hmm. Uh, the first theory is that he was either a sailor or a pirate. Pirate, yeah. And that they tried to commit mutiny. Right. And it didn't go well. And as punishment, they cut off his legs. Mm. And apparently threw him overboard. Mm. Which to me seems extreme. Right. Like, I know a little bit about piracy because of my time when I was in Nova Scotia. I went to some of the museums out there. And they could be cruel. But you wouldn't cut off someone's legs and then throw them overboard. You know, it's like what's well, one or the other, right? Like either cut off his legs and have him around as a as a as a burden, or throw him overboard. You know, you wouldn't. <laughs> this, you don't have to make more of an example than just killing him. You know. Yeah, and getting rid of the legs just totally defeats the purpose of having a plank. And the fact that they found him and it was still healing implies it was shortly after, and the fact that it was surgically done. Mm -hmm means uh, it probably wasn't a pirate with a sword or anything like that. All right, so that's number one. Mm -hmm. Another theory is that because he had very soft hands, they weren't hard like that of a laborer mm. or that of a pirate with ropes and stuff like that, is that Jerome was some kind of nobility and that he was heir to a fortune and that they decided the best way to deal with him is to just take him out, mm. cuff his legs, throw him over the ocean and good luck kind of thing. But again, it kind of says, uh, well, the reason they were thinking this is because of his darker complexion, because of his soft hands. Soft I mean, hands he wasn't yeah. a he wasn't a fisherman, he wasn't a laborer, and apparently he had very nice clothing. Oh, yeah, which is like I found that in one of the many websites I read. I'm like, that kind of seems like a big deal. So I I don't know why that isn't more highlighted. 
Hmm. But then again, if you're going to kill somebody in your family, let's just look at the British royal family, for example. There are easier ways to do it than cut off the legs and throw them into the ocean um, and maroon them out in the water. Like, put them in a tower, cut off their head. You know, something a little more final, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, because obviously he didn't die, uh, and the injuries weren't made to kill him. So it wasn't, it didn't seem like that was the right approach. There's another theory that he was Jeremiah Mahoney, a uh, Irish immigrant from the United States who fled his family. I could find very little to validate that story. Mm. And also doesn't claim, you know, why did he lose his legs? How did he end up where he was? You know, a lot of Irish people, you know, moved around at that time. Doesn't necessarily mean it was him. You know, I don't know why his name pops up. I'm sure there's more to that story, but there is a big theory here that kind of just blows all the other ones out of the water. So I didn't explore this one as much. The last theory has the most weight to it. Mm. It's a little too coincidental, but I don't think it's exactly uh, finite that this was what happened, but we'll explore it. So his story, Jer Jerome's story, takes place in 1863. We're going to go back a couple years now to 1859 in Chipman, New Brunswick. Mm. It was the winter and there was a group of lumberjacks going through the forest. Heard a couple different versions of this, but we'll go with this one. And they found this man. Some say he's by a wood pile. Some say he's by the trees. Some say he's on the, by the banks of the river. Either way, this man was not doing very well. He was freezing. He was cold. His legs were horribly fr frostbitten. Mm. They thought he'd fallen into the river and then crawled himself out. And was, that's when they found him. Unsure what to do, the lumberjacks would then take this man to Gage Town to go see a doctor. The doctor who observed this man was Dr. Harry Peters, and he determined that his legs were frostbitten and gangrenous, which I don't know my medical stuff as well, but I think gangrene takes a while to set in. Mm. I think it's something that has, like, it takes, I don't want to say it takes a month, but it takes at least a few days. So he must have been in the, wherever they found him for a while, which I'm surprised that he didn't die from the exposure. You know, mm. if it's cold enough to get frostbite, you think you would die laying in the in the snow or by a tree or whatever. Hmm. So I'm surprised that he was alive, but that's the story goes. So Dr. Harry Peters uh, took a look at this man and determined that his legs were gangrenous, gangrenous and they had to be taken off. So they surgically cut off his legs just above the, both of the knees. When this man woke up from the surgery, he, he couldn't speak any of the languages, English or French, but he kept yelling at the word gamba. And they determined that gamba is Italian for leg. Mm. Kind of like you said, when you wake up and your legs are cut off, and you're kind of like, what happened to my legs? Right. And you're mad. Um, that's probably what happened. He woke up, this guy woke up and was like, why are my legs gone? Right. And, but he didn't know any words. All he was saying was, my leg, my leg, my leg. And because he kept saying the word Gamba, they said, this guy's name is Gamby. We're going to call him Gamby. Yeah. <laughs> Which that's is such a, yeah. That's... What a name. <laughs> we cut oh off his God. legs and now we're going to name him Leg. Great. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh my God. So Gamby, uh, of course, didn't have anywhere to go and didn't have any money. So they brought him before the overseers of the poor, which I don't think that exists anymore, but that's kind of like New Brunswick's version of a welfare system. And they said, okay, well, we can't, unlike the story with um, Jerome and, New, and Nova Scotia and New Brunswick, they said, well, we can't give him any money. So he's going to have to live amongst you guys in Gage Town for a while. But Gamby was apparently a very difficult person to have. He was prone to instability. He was moody. And he was known to do, quote unquote, darker things. But didn't say what that was. He said that sometimes he was very hard to control when men weren't around to watch him. Mm. I don't know if that means he, like, attacked anybody or went after any of the ladies of the house or what, but they really didn't like Gamby in Gage Town. He wasn't very welcome and he was kind of an expense. Wow. So the story goes, after quite some time, they decided, I've heard some people call it a, a ploy or a plan, to get rid of him. They knew that there was this European vessel coming across the ocean and they're going to pay this captain 25 pounds which is about a thousand dollars now to take him back to the italian consult in liverpool when you're going back over there take this guy with you and just dump him over there we don't want him here in gage town anymore so the the guy came he picked up gamby and off he went but as time passed a rumor started swirling that this captain was kind of shady really yeah and uh and didn't want to take him all the way back to liverpool yeah wow right so the story was he just dumped him off on a beach somewhere in maine right 
and let the elements take him. When the, when this happened, yeah, when the boat took Gamby there's, Gamby away, there's nothing to hold you to it. No, he's like, oh yeah, thanks for the money, thanks for the the guy. Yeah, <laughs> see you later. Right. Hey, how would you know? Like, there's no way he's not gonna write a letter back, right, from the Italian consulate in Liverpool that Gamby's arrived safely, right? Mm -hmm. And at that time, maybe Gamby would have died on the way over there, right? He was a liability on the ship as well. So this vessel left Gagetown around September 6th, 1863. And Gamby was never seen again. But on September 8th, 1863, two days later, George Albright finds a man with recently cut off legs in Nova Scotia. But I thought you guys legs cut off years earlier. Yeah. Well, yeah, you're right. That's a good point. You're right. It's been four years. Right. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah. And they said they were recently healing. Right. But I guess that is a good point. The, so the, it is open-ended. Is it just really unfortunate that there was two men around the same time who didn't speak the local language, who got their legs cut off? Their personalities are different. Gamby's a grumpy guy, while uh, Jerome is kind of friendly. Right. Good listener. They like to have him around the house, right? But there's, like, that's different. It could be that this is just like a wild story of... Um, person with no legs showing up on the beach or something like that right i i never thought about that you're right that there was a, a time difference and that they said his legs were recently cut off right so there it's kind of um the question is is gamby jerome and if not what do we think happened to either of these two men hmm. i was leaning over the same man and now you got me questioning that yeah <laughs> yeah well it like i just don't what do elements do to you know four-year-old wounds maybe they appear to be Freshly mm -hmm. opened because of the elements or the poor nutrition. Let let's say he was in the water for a couple of days. Right. Could his like, they wouldn't be stitches anymore? They would have healed up, but they could have swelled. Right. And maybe it looks like a new. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> maybe that. <laughs> but you, you think the people of um. I'm trying to play on the name now. People of Digby would have known. You know, if a body is in the water for so long, it would swell up. But. Mm. I mean, also, you don't expect to see recently, or not recently, but cut off legs, right? Mm -hmm. It's kind of an injury people don't see a lot of. So it could be like, oh, these legs, maybe recent, maybe, oh, no, so recently, maybe amputated limbs are more water absorbent or something. I don't know. Mm. I don't know how that works. Situation I never found myself in. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. <laughs> um, I thought it was the same guy and that maybe he just had a turn of heart when he's like, well, I don't want that to happen again. So I'll be a little bit nicer this time. Yeah. And so that, you know, let's say that is true, then, yeah, maybe, because you said with that first family, he was a little iffy here and there uh, with uh, the two people and the stepdaughter. Like, okay. they didn't like his company as much as the next person, so maybe mm. the change of personality came slower. Well, no one liked Gamby, but Jerome, he got along with the uh, the ladies because he was a good listener. Mm. That's what I'm going But not the first family, though. Oh, yeah, but that's because they were poor and they couldn't, right. they couldn't feed him, yeah. So maybe he just wasn't treated properly mm -hmm. so he never but then he finally got treated well and then okay and then the last time we put him as a freak show side attraction yeah yeah but he seemed, didn't seem to mind it too much so <laughs> yeah and maybe it's just like you know when i was a bitch or when i was an asshole <laughs> everyone still treated me like shit so uh, <laughs> i don't know yeah if if i was to guess i would say they're unrelated just for the fact of it being like open a brand new wound mm -hmm. and for jerome i i i don't know how i don't know what happens when you get scurvy but i think you do lose limbs you can and yeah. it was very like rampant yeah. obviously you can hear you, uh, <laughs> what the uh, modern film industry always has pirates yelling scurvy or mm -hmm. at least the um, oh yeah the satire yeah of pirates is scurvy yeah let's go with the idea he's a sailor or a pirate mm. and he has scurvy yeah and maybe uh they cut off his legs and determined there's no saving this guy so right. i'll throw him overboard right good, good luck on nova scotia over there right right it could be he's also then they're not that far from the bay of fundy and the bay of fundy has these crazy tides mm -hmm. so he could have been brought in from somewhere else right yeah or maybe the ship capsized yep or plenty of, yeah yeah lucky guy then <laughs> yeah, yeah to survive that it's probably easier to float on something if you've got no legs to <laughs> so weigh you down 50 50 percent of you's missing yeah 40 percent yeah. of you yeah 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 the the other question is why like let, let's say let's start with gamby he didn't speak french or english right but then testing other languages he could have spoke italian spanish right we know that jerome didn't speak any of these but you no know, he could have spoke greek he could have spoke russian 
or something like that, right? Yeah, it probably wouldn't have been Greek because if you know Greek, you're adjacent to Italy, so you're probably going to mm -hmm. know Italian. The argument I heard was back in 1863, Italy wasn't united yet, and so there's a lot of different Italian dialects at the right. time, and that only afterwards did they kind of get more aligned with each other. Mm -hmm. So it could have been he spoke dialect A, but they were speaking dialect Z mm -hmm. when because in Canada, right? Right. So that could have been that. But I mean, sure, okay. So he's the guy from Italy. <laughs> How did he end up here with no legs, right? Right. So, okay, you find out where he's from doesn't really solve the problem. No. They did kind of figure uh, the guys from no, uh, New Brunswick figured he was Italian anyway. That's what I sent him to the Italian consulate. Just because um, he, he said he said a couple words in Italian. But, I mean, if you say a couple words in Italian, doesn't necessarily mean you know Italian, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would say, like, the best bet is it's some kind of ship from mediterranean is doing work there mm -hmm. he gets scurvy or some kind of disease mm -hmm. they remove his legs he goes into like a fever or a coma and they think he's dead and they get rid of they just toss him off the ship yeah, there's no reason to keep him yeah yeah yep. that would be my guess that seems like the most mm -hmm. logical because like it's like and you can like oh yeah the hands are soft the whatever like but just like the royalty thing seems like such a they whoever thought of that theory really wants that mm -hmm. to be true <laughs> yeah. yeah it could be you're right that the that jerome was maybe a, a sailor but uh gamby could have been a lumberjack and he just fell through the ice and that's what happened to him mm -hmm. and then who knows maybe end up in maine or whatever like they thought right yeah it could be two men yeah i was going with one and that's kind of what some, some of the people discuss because they happened about the same time yeah but you're right there are some questions two stories yeah it's a mystery. <laughs> I thought this one was like, I wasn't going to do it, but I was like, it's kind of a lighter story after having, you know, yeah. a missing girl and then a horribly murdered husband. Yeah. It's kind of fun. A little different. Yeah, it's kind of fun. It's kind of fun. In comparison to those, yes, it's kind of fun, Kenton. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, and it's just more of a, a side piece information here, that following what happened to Gamby, people of uh, Gagetown are very upset. And, uh, and New Brunswick, they're very upset that this whole thing happened, that they kind of ride together to get rid of this guy yeah and that they pressured the government to change regulations so you couldn't just put someone on a boat and pay them off to take right. them away and that the bill was passed because of this thing with gambi i should mention that because it's important but it says uh the matter was debated in legislature and no charges were laid on the captain but that laws had been changed because of it so i should mention that because it's important yeah yeah not really relevant to the outcome but yeah for gambi can't be so, do you like this one? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, chill. It's kind of fun. Yeah, it was a little different, but it's a big mystery. And now I can say we've cut that one off the list so that we don't have to do it ever again. Well, now we can do double monster. We could do one yes. for Patreon. We'll do one for the. Yes. Yeah. What do you think? Good idea. Yeah, <laughs> I got some monster stories. I'm ready to cool. throw them at you. Dope. Well, thank you everyone for listening to this episode of Unsolved Game Mysteries. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave us a comment. Tell us what you think. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if you if you want to support us, please support our Patreon as well. Mm -hmm. As always, my name is Kenton DeYoung, and I'm sitting here with my co-host Dylan Furman, and this is Unsolved Canadian Mysteries.